the Dharma is in our every action. We do not usually realize that the Dharma is in our mind, but it is. So what we do is we look for the truth outside of ourselves rather than looking inside ourselves. The awakened mind sees clearly. The awakened mind puts us in a position that we can truly understand and see things as we move forward. It's not clouded over. It's not in a situation where we are searching outside for happiness. We get back into the realm of delusion and attachment at that stage. And that certainly, in my opinion, is not going to get you where you would want to go at that stage. Because the moment you get what you think is going to make you happy, it ages, it changes, it gets a scratch on it, it's no longer as new, somebody else has something bigger and better, it simply does not hold that test of time. So the ultimate, I would be happy if only you look at those two words again and see the power or the danger in those things. And it's not just material things. If only I had a partner in my life. If only I had this. If only I had that. The grounding has to be you yourself. Anything else that comes towards you is something that then has to balance out with that practice. Use no mind to study the Dharma. I mentioned rebirth is one of the concepts that some people have issues with uh, from a Buddhist perspective. Um, there's also a term emptiness. There's also a term no mind. We're asked now to contemplate using no mind to study the Dharma, to understand and to have that be your state of mind. And why I mention that quite literally is that this is one area where I think it is important to understand that concept. Quite literally, the true mind does not differentiate. It allows us to see the world as it really is and not as our perception is. And by utilizing no mind, what it means is you're not using the mind to sift through. You're quite literally seeing the truth as it is. You're not sugarcoating, putting in your perceptions. You're not changing it based upon where you are and how you think that given day. So, come to our conclusions as we're almost at the end of our class. I apologize. I had all these tremendous plans for it to be interactive and for you guys to read passages and let's hear stories. I was going to put a few people on the spot, too. I won't deny it. But... What I've tried to do is relate to you, based upon here, a focus. I would urge all of you, again, read chapter 1 and 2 thoroughly. I would urge you to read ahead in the book as much as you can. I would urge you to prepare as best you can when you come to class. But more than anything else, I would urge you to take the lessons, the thoughts, the comments that are going through your head right now and apply them to your life as you leave here. You hear the saying, the comments of pay it forward, or what comes around goes around, or one small act of kindness can change the world. Oftentimes it's said within Buddhism that you're following a path. Now those that follow the level of cultivation would say, ultimately at the end there is no path, as there is no mind. There simply is. But I think for people who are, I won't say beginners, but people who are on stages, the concept of a path is a very helpful thing, I find. And that quite literally allows you to use the Dharma and the words you hear as signposts to keep you on the path, to do the right things, to make the right decisions, to head in the right direction. The idea of having patience and compassion for yourself and love for yourself allows you to make mistakes along the way. But don't hide or deny those mistakes. If you make a wrong choice, you made the wrong choice. You have to know that and you have to say, I will try to do better in the future. We are all human. Will we make mistakes? Absolutely. I heard one thing years ago in business, and that was the only thing you can guarantee about any forecast is that it will never be 100% correct. And it's definitely true. It's a fact they still pay whether people, media, or just so much money and they're wrong 50% of the time amazes me. But quite literally, I think that's really a key to reflect along the way. So in conclusion, we are responsible for our own lives. We are responsible for our own happiness. We are responsible for our own decisions. One comment we often say in here is that 10% of life is beyond our control. We don't control that it snows. We don't control that somebody stepped on our foot. We don't control things. But the 90% of life, our reaction to that, we truly do control. And if there's
there's a thought that I can leave you with, that definitely will be the thought along the way. The freedom of thought is allowed by the Buddha, the Dharma, and it is literally signposts for your path. But Buddha is nothing more than a teacher. He's not telling you to do anything. He's offering you those signposts. It's up to us whether we accept it, whether we do it, or what, what we do with that information. There's a comment about being led, and it's a decision that you yourself have to think about as to whether you want to lead. I, I had a lot of thoughts this week as I looked at the election of a new pope for a billion people. I was raised Christian, wasn't Catholic, but I know a lot of friends of mine are Catholic. Of a million people waiting to be led. I'm not saying that's wrong. There's a lot of peace being given by the Catholic Church. There's a lot of great things being given, a lot of charity being given. I would never knock down anything. But at the end of the day, I would challenge you that it's not a matter of being led. It's a matter of you leading yourself in the direction that you want to go. And that, quite literally, to me, is the ability to see your true self, to see your true person, to see underneath the dust of the delusion, the attachments, and literally everything we grow up with, and as we sit down and leave the class and go out there and say, yeah, buddy, cut me off. Yeah, but they stepped on my foot. Yeah, but she was mean to me, so I'm going to get her back. Yeah, but, yeah, but, if only, if only. I hope over time these fall on deaf ears. And I hope over time that you yourself make the decision to take that step, to truly go forward. There's enough BS in the world, to use that term, and I apologize. Buddha stories. Buddha stories. Yes, that's great. I like that. But that's quite manual. literally, there you go. Never do it to yourself. If you do something, you go out tonight and do something you're not proud of. You go home and do something to your children or your partner you're not proud of. Start the journey by owning up to it. Start the journey by you yourself recognizing who you are, what you are, and how you're moving ahead from there. And I think to me that really does make a difference. Thank you very, very much for all your time. Thank you very, very much for all your focus, your concentration. Um, at this point in time, uh, Venerable Menyi, uh, did you wish to say a few words? I think we are perfect, thank you. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, was uh, there any direction for uh, next week's class? Uh, anything? How you made the class? Wonderful. Give him a big hand. Yay. Do you know the name of the uh, Pachisafar here? <laughs> <laughs> what is his name? I should be hanging up. There we go. Yes, it is good to address your friend with names. It's very important. And I really appreciate the facilitator share the experience with you. One day, you can be like that. How you like that? Okay, so practice what you learn is the most important thing. And one more thing I would like to know, who would like to share last week uh, what you learned and practice during the week? Anyone? Do anything about what you learned last week? Hands up. Nobody? Right here. Oh. Yes? Microphone. What's your name? Pasta. Pasta. Okay, yeah. it's a good name. <laughs> Difficult for Sifu to remember. Um, okay, would you like to share? Um, well, last week I remember you mentioned um, letting go of expectations. And that's something that I usually put a lot of pressure on myself and expectations, and then you ultimately just end up stressing yourself out. So this week I've just tried to let go of like expectations and like preconceptions and um, kind of just go with the flow and let things happen naturally. So that's one thing. Okay. And today, do you know the seat of your true mind yet? What is it? What is your true mind? What we mentioned in the meditation period, anyone can share? No, you don't know yet? Now the, the give, give, give her the microphone, she'll say 
say something. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> you said happiness? Peace and happiness. How? Let go your defilement. Let go your delusions. Let go your duality, which is very important. Why we suffer? It's not the others make you suffer. It's you yourself make yourself suffer. Okay? So we read the chapter, if you don't quite grasp the core teaching of today, the four reliance and four state of mind. What are the four reliance? Who can tell me? Okay, maybe next week is too much for you. Wow, Sifu already have a quiz for you. But for the fourth state of mind, it's very, very important. The first one is the faith, faith in yourself, and question why all of a sudden you don't have confidence in yourself. Questions, okay? And then, after this stage, and you are awakened, all of a sudden, because of your grasping, because of the dust, cover your mirror. And then with low mind. Low mind, that means you don't create suffering for yourself, which is grasping, attachment. Okay? It's not to talk about the mind. In fact, I really appreciate the class because I spent two whole days studying the mind. Because the ongoing class and the first path to get enlightenment, it is because of the mind makes us suffer. So with the ongoing class, would you like to have your hands up? I want to know how many ongoing class next week, 8.30? Okay. Um, the ongoing class is for those students who have been here for more than two years. Because I think if you're not here for two years, you can try to see how you like it. But in fact, I don't recommend. Because uh, the one who have been here for two years, and we want to get into something more than that. Okay, so they would be able to join the team, and then eventually they become part of the support team for the class. So. But you're welcome to prepare for that in the future. After two years with the temple, continuously, not on and off, it won't count. And then you can consider to join the ongoing class. And then the next step, we have the further step, the advanced class, and so forth. But anyway, we have a study group. It's for those ones who think they still don't understand very clear about the terminology, because you read the book, what is five desire? What is six dust? What are they? Okay, so we have the reading group here. If you want to join the reading group, let me know. And I think Jane, Mike, is in the reading group. She's the leader. And Martin and Greg, right? But anyway, you can send me the, um, uh, that you want to join the reading group and let me know um, maybe you've been studying Buddhism in some other place, it doesn't matter because we will divide the reading group in different stages the beginners or someone they've been studying for a couple of years and so forth okay, so you have a nice Sunday let's then enjoy Palm to say to each other, may you be well and happy. May you be well and happy. May you be well and happy.